Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits. And their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. <laughs> What was the accident? He got killed. He got killed. He got He got put in a pie by Mr. McGregor. Uh, now, run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Did he get eaten? He got put into a pie. We try, not to say, we try not to say he got eaten because it makes us scared, so we just say he got put into a pie. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a nice warm loaf of brown bread and five raisin buns. Yum! Now, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cotton and Cottontail who were good little bunnies went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty. very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and slipped under the gate. Bad Peter, you can't trust him at all. First, Peter ate some lettuces, and then he ate some French beans. And then he ate some radishes. And then, oh, feeling rather sickly, he began to look for some parsley. But round the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he meet Mr. but McGregor. Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on hands and knees planting out young cabbages but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving the rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Stop! Thief! <laughs> that tea party looked like. Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. Ew. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. Potato, my potato, potato. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster and faster and faster so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not, unfortunately, run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost. He shed big tears. But his sobs were overheard by friendly sparrows, who flew to him with great excitement and implored him to try harder. Boys and girls, what do you think the word implored means? Happy. Tell him to try harder. Tell him to try harder? Can anybody think of another word for implore? him to try harder. Ben? Calm down sounds good. Yeah, you have to calm down to try harder? Out of there faster or faster? It kind of means convince him or encourage him or beg him. So, hmm, this evening when you're ready for dinner and it's not ready yet and you're super hungry, I want you to say, I implore you to feed me. Can we practice that? Uh, All right. I implore you to feed me. Let's do it one more time. I implore you to feed me. Now, back to our story. They implored him to try harder. 
Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop on the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him, and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into the can. It might have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor, oh, you guys are in five-year-old kindergarten. You get to read the next page with me. Are we ready? Yes. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. He tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running. So, he went back to work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in that can. Yes. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He came to a wall and found a door in the wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. <laughs> An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head back and forth at him. Peter began to cry. Your mama then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and again, the tip of her tail twitched as if she were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about the dangers of cats from his cousin, Benjamin Bunny. Peter went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scratch! 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 Peter scuttered underneath the bush. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon the back of a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was towards Peter, and beyond him was Presently, he got down off the wheelbarrow very, very quietly and started running as fast as he could go towards the gate along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him out of the corner of his eye, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. 
Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and shoes for a scarecrow to scare away the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got all the way home to his mummy in the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down on the nice, nice soft sand up floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second pair of shoes and little jacket that Peter had lost in two weeks. I'm sorry to say that Peter did not feel very well this e that evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea. She gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. You may. F Thank you. Oh, I didn't expect applause.